How did 18th century society include Jews? Hannah Arendt gives a brief historical account of Jewish assimilation in her book The Origins of Totalitarianism. According to Arendt, it was only Jewish intellectuals who primarily sought admission into society. This is in contrast to court Jews and bankers who depended solely in state affairs, away from the social sphere. In this video, we'll track the roles intellectual Jews played in order to gain admittance into a higher social standing. At the turn of the 18th century, society barred Jews from high society. Only a few Jewish intellectuals who proved their education were considered. But even after consideration, high society expected the Jews to show some unique personality or value in order to outweigh the fact that they were Jews. In short, they were Jews and yet presumably not like Jews. Arendt calls them the quote-unquote exception Jews. At this point in history, society was intrigued with exoticism. Artifacts from foreign lands were put on display in order to accentuate the greatness of man. The exception Jews were also put on display and fit into Johann Gottfried Herder's conception as the new specimens of humanity. Thus, in order for Jews to be accepted into high society, they needed to meet certain standards and present themselves as exotic and foreign characters. This exoticism of the exception Jew lost its power when the German emancipation of 1807 gave all classes, including Jews, rights of equal condition. Jews were no longer perceived as foreign exotic objects, but simply another part of class society. Each class in society was given certain stereotypes. The Jews were given the stereotype as being the upstarts and the Philistines of society. They were perceived as having wicked psychological traits like greed, insolence, and servility. In addition, Jews were no longer seen as individuals with exotic personality, but instead as Jews in general. At this stage, Jewish intellectuals needed to distinguish themselves from the Jew in general in order to gain admittance into high society. They did this by accentuating this new stereotype into an attractive affair for the bourgeoisie. According to Arendt, during the 19th century, the bourgeoisie became terribly bored and weary. They sought an escape from the classical structures of high society, and the intellectual Jews provided this. The perceived wickedness of the Jew, whose role represented a sort of black magic, was traded in for social prestige, and this aroused the bourgeoisie. According to Arendt, no better example of this is Benjamin Disraeli, who eventually became the Prime Minister of England. Disraeli dressed differently, combed his hair oddly, and by queer manners of expression and verbiage. He announced radical conspiracy theories, saying that England was run by secret societies, and that the Jews were plotting for global domination as retaliation against the Christian people. He even went so far to propose that the Jews were the chosen man of the chosen race. In short, Jewish intellectuals glorified the stereotypical wickedness of the Jew in order to gain social standing, and this would come back to hurt the Jews in the form of modern anti-Semitism later on. Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, Jewish intellectuals needed to conform to societal expectations in order to gain admittance into high society. This started with the exception Jew, who acted as a foreign exotic object, and continued to Jews like Benjamin Disraeli, who accentuated the Jewish vice of wickedness in order to gain appeal to a bored society looking for dark entertainment. These characteristics of Jews, according to Arendt, would eventually lead to the support for modern anti-Semitism. For more on Hannah Arendt and her thought, I'm in the process of making more videos, so if you enjoyed this, please like below or subscribe. Thank you for watching.